If you see this picture on the screen, it might just look like a bunch of random dots, but they say there's something hidden inside. I've known about these pictures for years, those strange magic eye images that supposedly hide three-dimensional shapes. People told me, look, there's a shark in there, or a horse. But no matter how long I stared, I saw nothing, just noise. Then one day, something clicked. The dots started to move. The image popped out into 3D. And that moment stuck with me. How can a single flat picture hide depth? Why can some people see it while others can't? I wanted to find out, so I decided to make my computer see it too. Before we go into how we can make a computer see the 3D image hidden behind an auto stereogram, let's first understand how the auto stereogram itself is made in the first place. Because once we see how depth is encoded into that flat pattern, it'll make much more sense how we can later decode it using math. We begin not from the image you see, but from the invisible shape behind it, a depth map. Think of it as a 2D grid of numbers where brightness tells you how far each point is. Bright means close, dark means far. This is the 3D structure we want to hide inside a single flat image, one that looks completely random at first, but secretly encodes depth in its pattern. Now, let's remember how our eyes actually see depth. You have two eyes, separated by a small baseline. Each eye sees the world from a slightly different angle. Close objects shift more between the two views. Far objects barely move at all. That tiny difference in position is called disparity, and your brain uses it to compute how far away things are. So if we could artificially create those disparities in a single image, we could trick your brain into seeing depth that isn't really there. That's what an auto stereogram does. Every pixel in our depth map tells us this point is Z units away. But to hide that depth inside a single image, we need to translate it into a horizontal shift, or disparity. If we imagine our two eyes, or two cameras, each with focal length f and separated by distance b, geometry gives us a simple rule. d equals f times b over z. That's it. Disparity is inversely proportional to depth. And it makes perfect sense if you think about it. When something gets closer, z gets smaller, the eyes have to turn inward more. The difference between their images, d, becomes larger. When something's far away, both eyes see almost the same thing. d shrinks. In our code, we don't care about the actual camera values, so we just write d equals k over z, where k is a constant that controls how strong the depth effect looks. Closer points, bigger shift. Farther points, smaller shift. Now that we know how much to shift each pixel, let's build the auto stereogram. We start with a narrow strip of random texture, just a few dozen pixels wide. That's our base pattern. Then, we copy this strip again and again across the image. But we don't copy it exactly. We shift each repetition slightly based on the depth at that column. Those tiny horizontal offsets are the hidden disparities that will later make the 3D shape appear. To make this work, we apply a simple rule. Each pixel x is linked to another pixel x prime that represents the same 3D point, as if seen by the other eye. These two positions should look identical. They're two views of the same point in space. So, both pixels get the same color. And as we move along the row, we keep building these pairwise links, making sure the left and right views stay consistent. You might think, wait, what happens when overlaps occur, when two points try to map to the same pixel? That's where occlusion comes in. If a nearer surface and a farther one both want the same pixel, we show the nearer one, because in real vision, closer objects always hide those behind them. That's what keeps the geometry believable. When we're done, we get a single flat image that looks like static or random dots, but hidden inside are all those carefully calculated shifts. When you stare at it and relax your eyes, letting each eye drift to focus on a different part of the pattern, your brain fuses the two slightly shifted textures, and suddenly the hidden depth map comes alive. It's the same geometry your brain uses in real life, but reversed. All right, now that we understand how it's made, let's flip the process around. What if we only have the final image, just the dots, and we want to reverse the process to recover the original depth map mathematically? 
All we need to do is figure out how much each part of the image repeats or shifts. In other words, we want to rediscover the disparity values. Here's how. We take one horizontal row of the image, pick a small window, call it A, then take another window, B, and slide it horizontally across the row. For each possible shift S, we measure how similar the two windows are. If the auto stereogram was built correctly, there will be one particular shift where the patterns line up perfectly. That's the same shift D that was used when generating it. To measure how similar they are, mathematicians already have a tool for this. It's called correlation. It measures how similar two signals are when one slides past the other, how well they line up at every possible shift. In our case, those signals are just the pixel patterns inside the two windows. As B slides across A, we calculate how much their ups and downs agree. When they line up, the correlation spikes. That's the best match. You can think of it as the overlap score between the two signals. How mathematicians derived its exact formula is beyond this video's scope, but it'll make sense once you see how it behaves. Here's the actual formula we'll use, called Normalized Cross-Correlation, or NCC. Subtracting the means removes brightness bias. Dividing by the standard deviations normalizes contrast. What's left is the shape similarity, a value between negative one and positive one that tells us how well the two textures match at each shift. As B slides across A, we compute NCC for every shift, plot those values, and we get a correlation curve. There's usually one clear spike. That's where the windows align best. We take the shift at that peak as our disparity. That's the same shift the generator used. We've just rediscovered it. We repeat that for every pixel in every row. Each cell now stores its best matching shift. Large disparities mean near objects, small ones mean far. Once we have disparities, we convert them back to depth using the previous relationship. Depth is just the inverse of disparity. You might notice the recovered depth looks grainy. That's expected. Each pixel's disparity comes from a small window. If the texture inside isn't distinct enough, multiple shifts give almost the same score. That uncertainty turns into random jitter. Even slight brightness noise can nudge the correlation peak by a pixel or two. It still follows the overall shape, but fine details dance around. And look closely at the borders. The left and right sides are always messier. That's because near the edges, our correlation windows can't fully fit inside the image. With fewer overlapping pixels, the correlation becomes unstable. Those incomplete windows produce unreliable disparities, so many algorithms simply crop a small margin on both sides. Edge noise isn't a bug, it's just the math running out of image. By the way, computing all these shifts by sliding windows can be slow. There's a beautiful shortcut from signal processing, the convolution theorem. It says that sliding and summing in space is the same as multiplying in frequency. So we can use the fast Fourier transform, or FFT. We take both signals, in our case they're the same image row because we're comparing it to shifted versions of itself, convert them to the frequency domain, multiply one by the complex conjugate of the other, then take the inverse FFT to get every correlation value at once. Since it's the same row correlated with itself, that's an autocorrelation. For small rows, sliding is fine. For large images, FFT can be much, much faster. So now we've come full circle. When creating an auto stereogram, we start with a depth map, convert it into disparities, and then use those disparities to generate the final image. When decoding it, we start from that same image, measure correlations to recover the disparities, and finally reconstruct the original depth map. Both directions follow the same geometry. The simple inverse link between disparity and depth, and the power of correlation to find alignment. Depth gives rise to disparity. Disparity gives rise to the image. And correlation brings the depth back. What once looked like random dots now becomes a 3D form floating behind the screen. A shark, a horse, a message. Each point recovered through math, not by guessing, but by pattern alignment.
And this last one, this auto stereogram hides a special message. If you can relax your eyes and see it, it says, like and subscribe. The perfect illusion, now revealed by math. An auto stereogram isn't just a clever optical trick. It's a small window into how perception and computation overlap. Our eyes capture flat images. Our brain compares them, matches patterns, and from that, it builds depth. With the right code, math can do the same, seeing structure hidden in randomness. Sometimes, the world only looks chaotic because we haven't found the right way to look yet. 